you go past 705, it becomes very unlucky for your year though, Simon. Okay, okay, well it's 704 yes. now, should I start? We've got 26 of us in the house. Ring Ross, the bell and we'll all take off. Ross is giving me the thumbs up. All right, hey, look at this. Huh, huh? Yes, yes. I don't have a gavel, yes. but there we go. Congratulations. Meeting is called to order, all right. Y'all, I'm going to share my screen and you're going to see uh, my presentation that um, will kind of direct us through the meeting and I'll stop it periodically through this thing so that we can see all of our awesome faces too. All right. So welcome to Rotary for the Fortuna Sunrise Club, July 1st, 2020, Volume 1, Edition 1. Thanks for joining us. All right. So we've got an awesome Rotary Club, and I'm so proud to be uh, taken over as president this year and uh, really thank Bob for a wonderful year. Um, normally, we do the flag salute, but I thought since we haven't really been doing the flag salute, I'll give you a little bit of history about July 4th, which is coming up this weekend. Does, does anybody out there know uh, why we celebrate July 4th? It is uh, Independence Day. Independence Day, great, great Don. That's, that's half the story. Um, Maybe a $2 fine to Don Jewett for that. Uh, so uh, actually our Independence Day was July 2nd. Uh, John Adams and Congress uh, signed uh, Declaration of Basic, uh, well, it wasn't the Declaration of Independence, but they uh, voted that we would become independent and secede basically from England. And then two days later on July 4th, they accepted the Declaration of Independence. So uh, there was actually a big kind of turmoil and uh, feud between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson about the actual day. Uh, on the second, John Adams went home, wrote his wife a letter, said, this is, this is the day that we're gonna celebrate. There'll be fireworks and parades. And uh, it ended up being two days later and uh, Jefferson and, um, and John Adams actually became political rivals and kind of were at odds with each other for a long time. Later in life, kind of patched it all up and wrote each other letters and, and became friends in their age. So uh, a message, you know, about people on the other side is uh, let's, let's, uh, let's try to find our similarities. All right, inspirational message for the day. When you learn, teach. And when you get, give. All right, I'm gonna call on Bob Judavine for the four-way test. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, this Bob. Is the truth. <laughs> do, you, do you need the cheat sheet? I do not, now we're golden. All right. Is it the truth? <laughs> What's the next one? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And is it beneficial to all concerned? Well done. <coughs> All right. Okay. Back to my screen. Everybody's seeing it, right? Yes, Bob, you almost got that right. <laughs> <laughs> he did amazing. Well, he hasn't said it for a whole year, so. Y yes. I'd expect a whole lot. Well, uh, we're going to go to our upcoming events and news for the week. Uh, we've got flags on Main Street for the 4th of July. Rick, Give me just a second, Simon. Let me jump in right there. This is Rick. Please, please. Uh, actually, the 4th of July is the noon Rotary Club's uh, day to do the flags. However, I found out yesterday they have only five people signed up for the morning and the evening. So we could use some help for you guys that enjoy doing it. We could use you at 630 in the morning. <laughs> and 6.30 at night to boost up the five people. So I'll those be there. can show up. Good, thanks, Herb. Thanks, Simon. 
You betcha. Thank you, Rick. Thanks. For, Thank you, Rick. Thanks for uh, taking on that that project, Rick, and uh, just really making it so robust. It's people really appreciate it in town. So it's awesome. So uh, another another thing that we've got coming up soon is a club survey that will be sent out via email. So be looking in your inboxes for that. There'll be a link. You'll click on the link and it'll take you to a survey. And the survey is really just to kind of assess our club, what you love about it, what you think could be improved, and then also some questions about uh, when you guys feel comfortable for in-person meetings. So there's some questions in regards to that. And then kind of just an overall question about how you feel about Rotary and what you love about it. So be looking for that email. Please, everybody, if they could fill out that survey, it'll only take five minutes of your time. And it would be really great for me to kind of get a pulse on what everybody's love about the club. Uh, we also have approved our 2020-2021 budget at my first board meeting yesterday morning. Um, and lots of really cool things in the works. So excited about that. Our district governor's visit <clears throat> is tentatively planned October 14th. So uh, put that in the calendars. Also, we have a district conference that's going to be October 24th at the Sequoia Center. And uh, lastly, we're rolling out our Rotary International new theme, which is Rotary Opens Opportunities. So Rotary International President Holdner uh, Knox theme for 2021 is asking Rotarians to create opportunities that strengthen their leadership, help put service ideas into action, and improve the lives of those in need. And uh, you'll see that in my uh, little new rotary flag that's behind me. I think even uh, past president Frank Ramos is also sporting the, uh, the theme flag as well. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna move on to the next segment, which will be a theme throughout my year. Um, and I know you're all excited for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do uh, an artist of the week every week where I'll give you some information about an artist, a little bit of history, and then uh, I'll talk to a Rotarian from our club about that artist and get their opinion. So this week we're fe featuring the art of Eric Joyner. So Eric was, uh, you know, born and raised in San Mateo, California. He attended the Art University of San Francisco and began working on commercial illustration. He did video games and role-playing game covers early in his career. Here's some of his early work. Uh, and later on, around 1999, he chose to focus only on topics that he liked. So he started painting uh, four different elements. He was doing Mexican masks, San Francisco city life, old newspaper cartoons, and Japanese robots. And his robot paintings became his most popular among his friends and fans. Uh, he had been collecting toy robots for about 20 years. And so he started incorporating those into his paintings. And uh, three years later, he uh, felt like he needed to include another element to that and was inspired by the film Pleasantville in which Jeff Daniels paints donuts. So Joyner started adding donuts to those illustrations. Um, and now I'm going to call on past president Frank Ramos. So if you could turn on your mic, Frank, uh, I'm going to ask you a question about this artist. I'm, I'm going to show a piece right now. It should be up on everybody's screen. It's entitled Lunch Break. And Frank, I want you to critique, discuss, interpret, maybe Talk about the types of meat <coughs> used in this painting. What can you tell me about lunch break? Well, I'll start off by telling you, I'd never heard of Eric Joyner, but I immediately fell in love with him. Anything, anybody who paints donuts is top of my list. Uh, so, especially this time of the morning. So, uh, you know, sometimes I think I feel like that robot right there. Just want to eat a donut and stomp all over things, especially after a, hard week at work but uh um 
I don't know. You know, it, it's see, every time I see one of those robots like that, I think of, I think of one of the, uh, of the uh, Godzilla movie, you know, those 60s Japanese movies where uh, there's, uh, there's some sort of huge monster stomping all over a city. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I like it just because of the fact that he's just so casually eating a donut there. <laughs> all right. All right. That was great, Frank. Everybody give Frank a round of applause. Uh, you only said I don't know twice, so I, I chalked that up to maybe a, a $10 fine, uh, Frank. That was, that was pretty darn good. <laughs> All right. Frank, Frank, do, do not let it go to your head. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all we need is a little dough from you, Frank. Just a little dough. <laughs> well, turn me into a nut, but yeah. So how far, how close am I to the Century Club, Ross? No, I'm just kidding. You're, uh, you're pretty <laughs> darn close. Uh, speaking of just kind of uh, people in the club uh, celebrating uh, awesome things that maybe we should, we should share, uh, past President Ross, um, I, I heard you got a couple of new sweater vests well they're in the mail and i've been waiting every time that the uh, car drives by i run to the door like the family dog thinking that the ups fan's <laughs> gonna come and uh, i'm chomping off the bit uh, uh past uh, president aaron dunn uh, gifted those to me mm. she, she felt i needed more and and i would agree i'm i'm hoping one day all every member of the club will be wearing sweater vests before maybe the end of your term well you know, with the collection of sweater vests, I know that you already have. I think a uh, $5 fine for you for wanting more and $5 for uh, Aaron for supporting this, this habit is in order. It's not a habit. It's an avocation. She's an enabler. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Uh, and then uh, why don't we turn, turn it over to Scott Downey? I, I heard... Uh, Maybe you were uh, fishing and maybe caught a fish? Yeah, that's true. I'm, tell, tell us more. Well, it was the only day that the ocean was good enough for me to go out on it. Just dredged around on what we call the dumping grounds because the dredged spoils from Humboldt Bay are transported offshore about three miles and dumped and fish seem to like it there it's it's actually uh put some gradient on the ocean bottom which you know moves bait around and that sort of thing and they, it's a good spot to try and i just looked out it was the only fish caught that day i think dirty fish huh yeah what so kind of, kind it wasn't very big though it's would be kind of small it would be not worth much, in other words. Not worth much? I mean, if you were going to hold your hands up, how, how big would you say the fish is? <laughs> Felt like that. I mean, is it the truth? Did, did you take it home to eat it? Yes, I did. I actually cut it in half and gave my fishing partner half of it and took half home, and we both had some. It's quite tasty. I'm finding some inaccuracies in the story. I mean, with the size of that fish and, and that it fed two people. I, is well, it you, not? Is it the truth? You kind of eat them like hors d'oysters, uh, like oysters. Too thick. Just an appetizer. Yeah, just an appetizer. Uh, goldfish. Some, some people like to eat goldfish, Simon. You might be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Using crackers. Well, uh, for such a fishy story, I think uh, 10 bucks your way. Wow. I'll make a note here in my records. <laughs> it's in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Please do so, sir. All right. Anybody else have anything that they'd like to uh, boast, brag, share, toot their air horn about? Uh, President Simon. Yep. I'll uh, brag about my grandchildren. My granddaughter, Layla, graduated this year's salutatorian uh, of her class. 
and my grandson, she's 13, my grandson, um, Asa, last year um, was uh, captain of the JV football team at Fortuna High School, uh, shot an elk, and uh, came up with like a 3.83 grade point average. So he got a scholar um, athlete uh, recognition. So I'll toss uh, 15 uh, for both of them and Ross Rally, the $2 fine that uh, President Simon, that was a weak first fine, President Simon, I have to tell you, $2. I'll round that to five to make it 20 for the whole thing. I love it, I love That's it. That's a great point, Don. I thought that was a really rotten chintzy fine too. <laughs> I thought it was a stage for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, let's tack on uh, five bucks to uh, Scott Downey and Herb for uh, for criti critiquing my early finds. How about that? Ooh, Ooh. Good one. Good one. <laughs> so, so Don Jewett, what did you end up with? What What was your after that? Uh, twenty for the whole thing, Ross. Okay. So yeah, around mine to twenty two. Oh, very, 22. Okay, so $22. <laughs> I want to pay that $2 again so it won't be such an embarrassment. Is it okay, I'll take that. If, if, if President Simon will allow that, we'll charge him $22. Of course, of course. Or is it, is it 22 TWO or 22 TOO? No, my hearing's not bad. It's $22. $22. Yeah. Okay. It's 22 to you. <laughs> How many O's are in that one, Simon? There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> How about um do it do we have anybody celebrating any birthdays? I think we kind of got caught up last week, but um anniversaries. Kids with bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Angela Johnson, welcome to Rotary. Well, thank you so much. Mary was Mary was in the old meeting, and I gave her instructions to transfer to the new meeting, but I don't think she's quite made it yet. Um, so, <laughs> sorry on celebrations. Mary's not here. <laughs> no problem. We'll just we'll just find everybody twice as much if if we miss their birthday. All right. Well, Simon, yes, yeah, this is John. I'll uh, I'll do a little bit of celebrating or brag on Cheryl's daughter Jen, who uh, just completed uh, graduated here a couple weeks ago. She completed her year of residency at the Stokes Medical Clinic in Cleveland as her doctorate in clinical psych, and she's starting a year of postdoc work this year, which will allow her to be licensed in every state in the country. And uh, so she's just doing wonderful there and specializes in children and families that have uh, undergone trauma. And uh, yeah, I, I said, well, I said, when you get, uh, get all the postdoc work, like you can come back to the North Coast and work and I don't know if, if she's if that's in her plans but she's done wonderfully so I'll, I'll throw 20 bucks in the pot for that amazing thanks for sharing <laughs> okay seems like if I just wait awkwardly here more people start fessing up with some dough it's kind of nice Anybody? you gotta go out and earn it Simon Oh, I, I will. I got plans for all of you guys. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we'll get back into my presentation. Um, all right. So we got to give it up to our immediate past president, Bob Judevine. And I drew this awesome pictorial of Bob in a little banker suit, just looking so dignified. So thank you, Bob, for your year. I am, <clears throat> I'm coming in, big shoes to fill. Um, 
Thanks for leading the club for the 2019-2020 uh, year. And if I was going to summarize your year, I would uh, I'd make it four words, giving, service, and having fun. All right, giving. Giving out big checks, right? Santa's sleigh, food for people, so many worthy clauses. Uh, the uh, cornhole uh, court that's going to be at Newburgh, I think they just installed that. Um, so many projects, uh, so much giving. Thank you, Bob. And also giving out some funky, funky dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Oh, oh, oh. There's the sprinkler. <laughs> so thank you, Bob. Thank you for service. Uh, <coughs> serving our community, helping out with the Flags Project, uh, meeting with other Rotary Clubs on projects, uh, giving out Paul Harris fellow pins, and uh, exchanging banners with our inbound exchange student, Go Miyagi. Thank you so much. And fun, having fun. Uh, leading us through fun times through the seafood boil, through our 25th club anniversary, and of course, debunking past president, Frank Ramos in a cow suit. Nice. Yeah, thanks so much, Bob. Uh, it was a fun year, and I think we all agree on that. Um, and I'll send you a little character I drew of you. And uh, if you could, uh, I think there's somebody outside of the bank right now uh, with something special for you, so. Oh, huh. all right, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's video feed if, if you look to uh, Diana Rios. Maybe turn on your uh, microphone if you can, Diana. That'll, that'll put you front and center. There we go, hi everybody. Open, open, open. Wait for it. In her video, you can see her fit. Hi, Mr. Judavine. Diana. There's Bob right here. <laughs> All right, so you want to tell him what you have for him? Yeah, so uh, Diana has his uh, past president's gavel and plaque, as well as his past president's pen. Uh, yeah, he's wearing on his lapel all day. So thank you, Bob. People are clapping right now, Bob. You just can't hear them. <laughs> Zoom clapping. Very nice. I wrapped it in duct tape, so it's it's a little hard to get out of the box, but that is fantastic. Almost open. Oh, that's so pretty. All right. Oh, very cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Diana. You're welcome. And innovation, Bob. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go sit back in my car. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we don't have a presentation today because it was my first meeting and I wanted to have lots of time to, to find you guys and have fun and, and uh, give some recognition to Bob. Um, but that is all the, that I had on the books for today. Is there anybody else that would like to, uh, closing messages, announcements, anything going on in the community that we need to know about or not going on in the community? Heck, heck hey, what? Simon. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to mention again about the uh, Food for People needs help at the food pantry on Fridays from 10 to 12. They need a volunteer if anybody's available. I'm doing, I'm doing it on Mondays. So, and I know I've been harping about this, but they really need some help. So they're really looking for somebody on Friday and what the time is 10 to 1? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. It's just two hours. It's pretty easy. Two hours out of your day. Yep. 
<clears throat> Excellent. Anyways, put it out there. It doesn't even have to be a rotary member. It could be just about anybody. Thank you. We'll once again, see some of you on Saturday, the July 4th for flags. Thank you. And uh, Penny's asking about the location, Kurt. That's at the the Seventh Day Adventist Church, or no? It's at the uh, at the St. Joseph's Pantry there on Newburgh Road. Okay. Yeah, at the at the I guess it's a Catholic church. Okay. Yep. Katie Garrison is the is the contact lady. Anybody, if anybody wants to, to have them contact me, and I can give them a phone number. Heck, uh, there was there was a rodeo announcement this week, correct? Yes, yes, there was. Uh, there will not be a rodeo this year. Bon deal. So, um, there was significant uh, effort to try and put one forth, um, but uh, the requirements and restrictions that that are uh, that or the guidelines for the county just made it not feasible. Um, I mean, we were hoping that we could have something for local cowboys and cowgirls, but the, but the requirements that ha would have had were so arduous that it just, there was no way to, to, um, to be able to put something together. Thanks for that. Does that include no parade also, heck? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it, it's all, uh, that, that's my understanding. I hadn't seen the exact parade decision. Uh, so I, I shouldn't speak to that because I don't know for sure. Um, but I, I, I saw the, I ran read the requirements that the county gave for the rodeo and it included the parade as well, which was, oh, okay. they, they were asking for not a parade, but more of a, of a drive around town and, but not one where people would congregate in the median of, of the boulevard. And so uh, I would have had to be uh, meandering through all the streets of Fortuna such as um, where we've seen a lot of drive-by uh, celebrations for uh, graduations or, or birthdays or whatever. That, that sort of thing is what the county was advocating. So I, I would imagine that that was also chosen to not move forward. But I wasn't able, was not able to attend the, the decision-making board meeting. Okay. And I know they have been doing a, a cruise on Main Street, not affiliated with Rodeo on, I think it's 7 p.m. Uh, folks are just getting in their cars and kind of cruising like old times. And that's been going on for a month or so uh, on Fortuna Main Street and South Fortuna Boulevard. So um, I know our neighbors got a really nice car. And every Friday you just hear that thing ra start revving up and you're like, oh, the cruise is happening. Uh, additionally, we've got the uh, 3rd of July festival that's canceled as far as the in-person gathering, but they are going to be shooting fireworks 3rd of July, and they're going to be doing them at an undisclosed location. They're going to be shooting them uh, so they explode a little higher in the sky so they'll be visible throughout the town. So um, if you're a fan of fireworks and celebrating Independence Day or the... Uh, the adoption of the Declaration of Independence, as we learned this morning, uh, go out and check that out. The third, I guess, would be time Halloween, right? Do you know about what time that would start, Simon? I, I would assume at, at when it's dark, completely dark. They they usually wait. They said ten o'clock. 10, 10 p.m. You're right. All right. And I also wondered if you could, uh, if there's a link to um, look at the work of the artist of the day, I, if you could send something out, that'd be great. I thought artwork was fantastic. Okay, yeah, I, I'll, I'll send out a link. Uh, and also just another reminder, club survey will be hitting your inbox as soon. I sent it out to the, the board last night and I haven't gotten um, any, uh, bad feedback yet so i think it, it should be pretty good to go here within a day or so so be looking for that and please uh express yourself it's a great great time to um you know not not in the confines of the the club where it's very public um but you know you can just express yourself and then i'll have that information uh it won't be attached to club members names but i'll have that information available for the entire club to get a look at too. So just so we can see where we're all at. 
All right. Hey, Simon. Yes, sir. Um, uh, having to do with this year's theme banner, mm -hmm. at, any, at any time during the year, can we show you the door? Yeah, yeah uh, you, could, you could give me a door prize, too. <laughs> we have one, don't we, Ross? <laughs> Bad, bad jokes. That's also going to be a theme this year. <laughs> so you're saying nothing's going to change. Nothing is going to change. Uh, that's the way we like it. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us for the club meeting today, my first club meeting of the year. And thank you so much for the leadership of Bob Judevine last year. Uh, Thank you, Assistant Governor Frank Ramos, for uh, you know guiding me as I got ready for our presidential year. And thank you, each and every one of our club members, for all that you do for our community. Um, it, it takes a village, and we're going to see in the next year that there's going to be even more of a need for Rotarians. So uh, be ready, be ready, because we're going to need to get in, get our working clothes on, and 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 do the good work that we always do. I wanted to apologize to Bob. I wore my mask and then I forgot to put it up. So I'm sorry. Didn't even occur to me, Diana. Sorry. I'm usually wearing it when I, when I don't need to and not wearing it when I should. Good intentions. All right. So Simon, do you have a uh, drawing this morning? I, I have not received the drawing bucket. Um, Jeff, is that, is that you? Oh yeah, that was me asking the question. Yeah, um, well, let's see. Uh, I'm pretending I'm drawing something. Oh, it's the $5 fine ball for Jeff Nelson. How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> well, at least make it worthwhile and put it at 10. Okay, I love it. I love it. 10 bucks, Jeff Nelson. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're, we're another club announcement too is we're, we're going to start filming the club meetings and having those available for people to check out uh, after the event. Um, we're, we're also filming the board meetings. Those won't be publicly available, but if anybody would ever like to look at them, uh, I can send you a link to that. But uh, our club meetings will be available online. So if you do miss a week, you can check it out after it happens. And it'll be a good way for us all to just kind of um, keep in communication together. So, but don't feel inhibited to to be yourselves, because I really feel like we're uh, we're a great group, and, and I don't feel like anything that we say in our club meetings couldn't be shared with the world. All right. Well, I guess officially, I'm going to ring the bell for my first meeting, unless. Anybody has anything that they'd like to chime in? Hearing nothing. Thank you so much for coming out to the July 1st Rotary meeting. Uh, I love y'all. Thank, Thank you, Simon. Good Thank you, job. Simon. There we go. Thanks, Just Simon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Ross. Yes. Yeah, Simon said, ask if anybody had anything to chime in when he was ringing the bell. I thought that was a pretty good pun for his first meeting. Not bad. Not bad. We would have never said that in our year. No. Simon says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, Scott. That one didn't even register with me. 